Okay, welcome back. This is video number nine in the Makerspace Learn to Knit um, series. We left off talking a little bit about gauge. I'm starting to get into deciding for our headband project, which we are designing from scratch, how big do we want it to be? So we've decided, we took a measurement. This is my head. My head is 22 inches around um, the back to the top as if I were wearing a headband. So that's my actual measurement. Yours may be different. It may be 21, 22. Maybe you have a tiny, tiny head. Maybe it's only 18 inches, um, shrunken head. So your actual may be different from mine. Um, now, when we're talking before, we're talking about negative ease. We know that we want our um, headband, we're gonna want it smaller than our actual head because we want it to be able to stretch. We want it to have some kind of tension um, to stay on our head. Um, because we're doing in ribbing, it's going to have quite a bit of stretch. Um, now, I it kind of seemed maybe to you, you that I picked four inches of negative ease out of the air. Um, it wasn't so much out of the air. It was kind of an experience, a mixture of experience from having done hats before for myself, for um, people of my size head, um, having done headbands, things like that. Um, that's how I got that number. But maybe you don't have that experience. Maybe you have no idea how much negative ease um, you want. Um, knits usually, especially ribbing, will have 25 to 50% um, be stretch bigger to be 25 to 50% bigger than they are when they're just kind of resting and hanging out. So another way to get to this final um, garment measurement, um, which my guess was 18 inches, is to say, all right, if I want to assume that my knitted thing is going to stretch anywhere from 25 to 50%, um, what would I have to choose so that if I enlarged it, by 125%, it would get to around 22. So at this point, I'm just gonna try a number. Um, I could try, let's say I tried 20. So 20 times 125%, which is 1.25, would give me 25 inches. So 25 inches is way bigger um, than we would want. Um, our actual head is 22 inches. Um, so we want it to be smaller than that otherwise it'll just fall off our head so let's try um, let's go down let's try 18 inches <clears throat> so 18 inches when enlarged by 25 percent so times 125 percent is 1.25 gives me 22.5 inches so that's pretty close um, so I'm gonna go with 18 inches so that's um, if I'm going with 18 inches that means negative 4 inches of ease. So that's how another way to get to that number. So now we have our garment measurement, how big we want it to be when it's just kind of sitting on the table. Now this is a circumference all the way around. Um, when it's laying on the table, it'll be about half of that. It'll be about nine inches across. Um, that's not exact. If you measured it the circumference versus measuring it flat and timesing it by two, um, you would get slightly different measurements. But for our purposes, that's probably how we'll measure it. Because it's kind of hard to measure in a circle when you have something um, just kind of sitting there. So garment measured. Our target is 18 inches. Well, my target is 18 inches. If you have 20, you will do this differently. Let's say that I wanted to get um, to 20 inches. Um, you would start with um, your garment measurement when relaxed would be less than this. It would probably maybe it would be 16 inches, um, and you can you can kind of tell um, based on other hats maybe you have maybe you have another headband so go measure that headband and how big is it um, does it stretch the same way that your um, that your ribbing on your thing is going to stretch maybe maybe not um, but you can kind of like there's roundabout ways you can kind of figure out how big you want things to be this is just a calculation that may or may not help you. Um, sometimes if I want a scarf, um, I'll measure a scarf I already have, and that will tell me um, how big I want to make a scarf generally. Um, so that's one thing. 
So now I want an 18 inch circumference headband. How do I get from stitches um, from number of inches to figuring out how many stitches to cast on. So when I say cast on, basically um, casting on is how you get your initial row of stitches. Um, you're going to cast on a straight needle, we're going to join it around, and we're going to knit in the round that number of stitches all the way up. Um, because this pattern is just going to be a straight on um, rib with no increases, no decreases, um, nothing fancy, the number of stitches that you start with is going to be constant throughout going throughout the pattern. So you'll start with um, your cast on stitches, the number, you'll end with that number, hopefully, if you didn't drop any stitches or you didn't make any uh, unintentional um, increases anywhere. So that's why if we're doing something like that, it's kind of like important to know how many stitches we want because we want it to be the right size. If we cast on too many stitches, it'll be too big and we won't hit our 18 inch target. If we cast on too few stitches, um, it won't be big enough and we'll have to stretch it a lot. Um, because we have are doing a ribbed headband, there is a lot of give there. There is a big um, gray area where um, even if you don't get exactly on target 18 inches, it'll probably still fit your head. So although I'm going through this process of how I'd make a guess and how we're doing a gauge swatch, in real life, this is just a headband. This isn't the end of the world. This isn't a cardigan you're gonna be spending you know, four months uh, making. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, worst comes the worst, if you're really far off, you see that, you know, an inch into it, the thing measures 28 inches around, then you know what, you're going to rip it out and start all over again. You know, maybe you wasted an hour or two hours. Um, who knows how long it would take you. Um, but it's better than getting all the way through it and then, you know, spending more time and having it not fit. So we can do, we'll do our guess, best guess. We're also going to do a gauge swatch um, for this exercise. Um, because we need to know how to do gauge swatches anyway, and it will help us. So in the yarn that I want to use, <clears throat> in the yarn that you want to use, you're going to look at your information here. Um, we saw this before. It said, I'm supposed to get 22 stitches um, across and 30 rows up to get a four by four inch square, or 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square. So <clears throat> Rowan, says that on a size six needle, um, a four by four inch square, I'm supposed to get 22 inches across and 30 rows up to get four inches. So if this is a four by four square, why don't I have 22 by 22 stitches? Because um, knit stitches, the way that knit stitches um, are made, they are wider than they are tall. So they are not square. They actually are kind of rectangular. Um, so that's why you would need more of them to make up four inches. You need fewer of them to make four inches this way. Um, when you are designing something, you can use graph paper. There is a, such a thing called knitter's graph paper that um, you can actually type in what gauge you want and it will make graph paper to scale of what you want. So I am a graph paper freak. I use it to design all sorts of different things. Um, Marissa particularly knows this. Um, she knows about my graph paper obsession. So um, that's a really awesome thing and we actually might take a look at that. Maybe I'll print some out and show it to you um, when we get into actually charting and making our pattern. Um, right now we're just kind of making a guess about how many stitches we want to cast on. So and this is in stockinette stitch. <clears throat> um, all ball bands will assume that you're doing stockinette stitch. Um, if you see ST, ST, that means stockinette stitch. That's just a common abbreviation. ST being, um, if you just see ST, that just means stitch. You'll see that in patterns. So if we were to make, um, let's say, we're doing ribbing. If we were doing stockinette stitch, we would just have knit, 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 knit. In our pattern, <clears throat> we're going to have K3, purl 2, ribbing. So we're going to go knit, 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 purl, purl, knit, 
knit, knit, purl, purl. Um, because these purls pull behind, this, the way that it's structured is going to pull these groups of knits in our pattern together. So this is actually, if I'm knitting this row first, and then I knit a row of all knits, this is gonna flare out. Um, and that's why you'll see on your ribbing, sometimes you'll have ribbing on socks, on cuffs, um, you'll see it, it's small, and then it flares out when it gets to the normal sleeve. It could be for that, or it could be because they change the number of stitches. But ribbing definitely is gonna take up less room. Because our pattern stitch takes up less room than a stockinette stitch would, we need more um, stitches to get to four inches. So in stockinette stitch, I might only need 22 knits um, to get to, knit stitches to get to four inches. In our pattern stitch, I'm gonna need more than 22. I'm gonna need maybe 24, maybe 26, 28. You don't know exactly how many, but it's definitely gonna be more. So um, this is kind of underestimating the number of stitches that we're gonna need. Um, in This is also measured over four inches. The reason we measure over four inches is because um, it's nicer to get a little bit of an average over a couple inches. If you just measured one inch, um, it's kind of, you won't get as accurate a number because sometimes your gauge, you know, will be 5.5 um, stitches to the inch, 5.25 stitches to the inch. And you can't really measure 5.5 or 5.2 inches because even just moving the fabric a little bit is going to give you a different number. So that's why we measured over four inches. When we do actually end up measuring our swatch, we will be measuring it over four inches and taking that measurement. So when they tell you you're supposed to get 22 stitches in four inches, what they're telling you that average, you're going to get um, 22 divided by four, you're going to get 5.5 .5 stitches per inch average in stockinette stitch on a size six needle, theoretically, this is what Rowan says, okay? So as you can see, having a gauge information um, in stockinette stitch isn't super helpful to um, our pattern stitch, which is gonna be in rib. We definitely know it's gonna be skinnier. It'll take more stitches for us to get to four inches. So instead of 5.5 inches, stitches per inch, I'm gonna go up. Maybe I would go to six. Maybe I would go to 6.5. I think seven, you're probably getting, you're adding a lot of stitches at that point. So I'm not sure if I would go as high as seven, but maybe, you know, this is just a guess. Um, I'm just gonna go to six. I'm gonna be a little conservative. Um, for the fact that, um, it's ribbing. It's gonna stretch probably more than 25%. So I have some room on the upside and I don't like my headbands to be falling off my head. There's nothing that annoys me more than having my hair in my face on a windy winter day. So I'm just gonna go with six inches, stitches per inch. That is going to be my educated guess as far as that is concerned. So if, I've, if we figured out that I want a garment um, actual measurement circumference of 18 inches and I know that my theoretical my guess is going to be six stitch six stitches per inch average then how do I know how many stitches to cast on you're gonna take your garment six six 18 inches <coughs> and you're gonna you're gonna multiply it by six stitches per inch and that is going to give you 108 stitches to cast on, all right? So if I was doing this, say an all stock and that stitch, I could do 108, um, no problem, because I don't have any pattern to pay attention to. Nothing is preventing me from um, doing 108. However, our pattern is a K3 P2 rib. So when we knit in a circle, let's say this is the beginning of our round here, we're gonna start off with um, knit, 
knit, knit, purl, purl, all the way around. When we end to make this seamless so that there's no um, weird stuttering of the pattern so it all makes it all match up, we wanna end off with a purl, purl so that we just start right back in, into the knits again. Um, this is a pretty easy pattern to see. Sometimes you'll have pattern repeats that could be 10, 12, 18 inches long. Um, so this is a kind of short one. It's a probably easy. Um, however, if we did 108 stitches, um, this probably wouldn't match up very well. Because we have K3 Pearl 2 rib, this is a five stitch repeat. So we need something that's a multiple of five. Um, because I have 108, I could either go to 110 or 105. I want to go to 105 as our cast on. And that is my final answer. <laughs> so you can see, measure your head. We figured it out our ease. We said 25%-ish. Um, 18 times 125% got us to that 22 inches. We looked at our gauge and stockinette stitch. We found that in stockinette stitch, it was supposed to be 5.5 stitches per inch. <clears throat> Ours is probably going to be more because we need more stitches to make up for the fact that we have ribbing that's pulling in. I went to, I guessed six stitches per inch. Um, you could guess 6.5, you could guess seven, and you'll get different result. Uh, I'm being a little bit conservative. We, since we came up with our goal is um, six stitches per inch, our garment was 18 inches. So at 18 inches, six stitches per inch gave us 108 cast on stitches. Um, if we're doing stockinette stitch, we would just probably stop there and do 108. Um, since we have a pattern repeat to consider, it's a five um, stitch repeat, five stitch repeat. Um, I rounded down to the nearest five, <clears throat> which gave me 105 cast on stitches. So as you can see, this isn't the easiest um, thing to do. Uh, you can do it, um, and it's good to be able to know how to do all this math because there will be situations where you're doing the same exact thing, only you're transferring um, from a known pattern cast on um, with a certain yarn, transferring it to a different yarn, and have to figure out your new number of cast on stitches. So you will be using this kind of math. Um, this isn't crazy. Um, you can absolutely do this. If you need help with your math, <clears throat> just tell me, comment, how many, what is your actual head size? And I can do out the whole entire thing for your head with your yarn. We can totally do that. Um, so what we're going to do right now next is actually look at a gauge swatch that I made. Um, you will do this math, see what you come up with, and then you're gonna do an actual gauge swatch and we'll see exactly how far off we were. We may be totally off. I have no idea. I made this gauge swatch, but I have not measured it yet just because I wanted to be a little bit of a surprise for myself um, to see how close I was or how far off. It may be very embarrassing, um, but we'll see that when we go to the next video because we're gonna measure this gauge swatch. We're gonna talk a little bit about it and we're gonna see um, what, what we actually got for stitches per inch. So I'll leave you with that suspense.